The road to hell is paved with good intentions. What is a real life example of this? Hey guys! I am Charlotte the Starlet. These are my girls, Angel and Glitter, and this is my little boy Seth. Today's Ask Reddit question is The road to hell is paved with good intentions. What is a real life example of this? Which is a very good question, may I say. The introduction of kudzu for erosion control. It has become invasive and girdles and kills plant life above ground without establishing proper roots, therefore causing soil erosion. Once upon a time, I found a wallet on the beach. Having lost my own more than once and not having it returned to me, I am aware that it's a stressful life event. So my first thought was how to re return it quickly. Looking through the contents, the owner was from out of state and there was no contact information other than the driver's license. Aside from that, only a few credit cards and some cash. Not knowing how long ago the owner had left it, I thought let's just sit here for a while and maybe he'll return looking for it since it's the first thing I would do. After a couple of hours of fun and sun, we needed to move on. My next best idea was to turn it into the local police station, which we found easily enough just down the street. What I thought would be a quick in and out turned into a full on interrogation session, during which I was at one point accused of theft slash robbery. Oh no, that's the one thing I was hoping it would not be. Bruh, damn. Because that's what police do in many, many types of crimes, especially violent ones. One of the first suspects are usually the person who turns it in or notifies the police. I've seen it happen way too many times, honestly, like in real life and fiction. It was a bizarre experience to say the least, which wasted an hour of our day. Haiti did not have cholera. A disastrous earthquake hit Haiti in 2010 after the earthquake humanitarian forces from the UN arrived to help and the Nepalese contingent reintroduced cholera to Haiti. This epidemic has since infected approximately 850,000 people and killed over 10,000. Damn. Trying to rescue too many cats. Yes. Crazy cat ladies can easily spiral out of control which is why they need to have tabs checked on them and those cats. I worked at a cat shelter for a few years. It always sucked whenever we got an intake from a hoarding situation. It was always at least a dozen cats who had a laundry list of health problems and were practically feral. Damn. Yeah, like, um, I've seen examples of this in in a couple episodes of hoarding and it was unbelievable like in one bit the the cleanup crew who went to like empty out the hoarder's house came across 10 cats in total and one of them was dead which had to have been dead for a longish period of time because it, it was no spring chicken corpse but yeah although ridiculous it was also very sad because it is a manifestation of a mental illness you know the introduction of non-native species as a means of solving an environmental problem most moral panics stranger danger convincing people in the 1970s to 90s that hundreds of thousands of American children were being yoinked into random cars by evil strangers each year while downplaying and underfunding the resources that could actually help decrease child abductions. Child abductions not only came anywhere near those huge numbers, 
but it was and still is nearly always a custodial issue or a very close family member. Really. Teaching people to be wary of kidnapping is great. Directing all their fears towards vague, spooky strangers and not helping people learn how to actually prevent kidnapping is kinda shit. The bigger impact was on the kids born in the late 90s and onwards. The Stranger Danger era basically created an entire generation of paranoid helicopter parents. Yikes. Uh, yes. I was kind of one of those kids. Not only was I born in the late 90s, but that is exactly the type of thing my parents would go hard on, you know? constantly hammering that into my head and it wasn't even just my parents it was in like my schools and everything those parents who solve all their kids issues and don't make them stress about consequences of their own actions their kids just turn into inept and entitled adults who still act 15 for decades and not only have a harder life for themselves but make but make life miserable for everyone around them too Bounties for killing invasive animals. You have a bunch of animals you don't want, so you pay people for each animal they kill, usually by getting them to produce the carcass or a genuine body part. What? Hold up. So, so like, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I should not be laughing about this, but this is kind of like in Snow White, when the queen asked like the huntsman to prove that he'd killed Snow White by showing her Snow White's supposed heart. That's exactly what this sounds like. People then start breeding said animal as it's easier and more lucrative than catching them in the wild. The authorities find out and stop the bounty program. So the breeder let all their newly bred invasive animals into the wild. Oh my gosh. Situation is now worse than before. There's a famous example involving cobras in India. They also tried this with rabbits in the area I used to live as a kid. In this case, no breeding was required as the bounty drop-off point was the local police station. You'd go in with a bag of cute bunny tails, the officer on duty would count the tails and pay you for each tail. Wow. He'd then take the bag of tails round the back of the station and pop them in the dumpster. At which point, a friend of the bounty hunter would dive into the dumpster, <gasps> retrieve the tails, go into the police station by the front door, and repeat the cycle with the just retrieved set of tails. Oh my god, that's horrible, but at the same time, that's kind of a good business model in my eyes, you know? Like, <laughs> that's sneaky. Like, work smart, not hard, you know? <laughs> Lobotomy, yes. Surgery to fix the mentally unwell. It sounds so good. No more reliance on medication. You're good from now on. But it didn't work. Mm -hmm. The outcomes were awful and it was frequently done without any sort of consent. It all could have been shut down fairly quickly if people were honest about what was happening. But careers and money was at stake. So many unnecessarily suffered. Yeah, like one of the craziest examples to me will forever be J JFK's daughter, his, his uh, secret daughter that he never really talked about as much as his other kids. You know, she was, nah, she had it rough from the start, you know, like apparently when she was being born, she got pushed back in for some crazy ass reason which then led to her having learning disabilities and, uh, and other mental health problems, you know? And so to cover it up, they hid this girl from the public as much as possible so she wouldn't get in the way of, of JFK reigning. So they sent her to a questionable mental hospital and gave her a lobotomy, which did not solve the problem as this commenter rightly said. Several years ago, I heard a case from the 50s or so where a young boy was lobotomized for his poor behavior. Seven years old, lobotomized for being forgetful and reading late at night. 
Are you kidding me? That's exactly what I'm doing right now. No, it's quarter to two in the morning. Damn, that could have got me killed back in the day. Sheltering your kid from every possible problem. During one of China's extremely dry seasons, think of their dust bowl period. Mao ordered the killing of birds to prevent bird eating seeds and so increase in agricultural productivity. Instead, what happened is that birds feeded on plant pests and were killed, making the situation even worse and resulting in the death of millions. A bad dry season, deforestation, misuse of pesticides, and a war against nature under his belief that conquering nature was the way to improve agricultural yield and so the well-being of their citizens. Stupid uninformed decisions, even if seemingly rational to a layman, resulting in one of the biggest human and ecological cost disasters. We're still making such decisions from time to time, and sometimes for profit on the belief that such will benefit all, and sometimes for genuinely good reasons. Wow. George W. Bush admin created subsidies on corn to promote the production of ethanol to be used in fuel, etc. Better for the environment and so forth. Couple of downstream effects. 1. Ethanol in fuel lowers the fuel efficiency, so you have to buy gas more frequently. More of an inconvenience, but that's why fuel with no ethanol is usually slightly more expensive. 2. Corn sold for other purposes than ethanol didn't qualify for the subsidies, so there was a strong financial incentive to sell to ethanol producers instead of for food. This drove the price of food corn and food using corn derived ingredients up, affecting poor people most. 3. The financial incentives were so strong that farmers were buying up cheap land in areas where very the financial incentives were so strong that farmers were buying up cheap land in areas that were very unsuitable for corn production or switching away from crops that would grow more easily if they can afford more land. In western Kansas, corn needs to be heavily irrigated in order to grow. There's an enormous aquifer that stretches from South Dakota to the Texas Panhandle. Increased irrigation combined with a years long drought drain the aquifer to the point that the city of Hayes has to truck their water in. Since the abysmal performance of American schools has been in the news recently, No Child Left Behind and its replacement, Every Student Succeeds Act, America has never had really good public education, but it used to be serviceable. NCLB came in to try and create some milestones and accountability. Instead, it made the problem worse. ECSS came in and tried to address its problems but changed the stuff that wasn't the problem and left the bad parts unscathed. Taken all together, 57% of high school graduates can't read at a 7th grade reading level and over a quarter are functionally illiterate. What? Damn, that seems kinda crazy in this day and age. Like. Damn, we're in 2023 and and illiterate people are still graduating. The fact that there is illiterate people to begin with is, is just sad. But to graduate illit- illiterate, like damn, helping someone by enabling them in their self-destructive behaviours. Sometimes you help someone by denying them what they say they want. On a personal scale, trying to help a really drunk person. I'm a woman and talkative and I started talking to another woman at a bar who was really really drunk. She told me her friends deserted her so I said she could hang out with me and my friends as it was my birthday to keep an eye on her and because she seemed fun. Then she started falling off chairs and spilling drinks so I encouraged her to get a cab. She started crying how everyone hates her and as as I was helping her as I was helping her outside but agreed to go home. 
I got a cab, paid for it, because she was a mess, and suddenly, all of a sudden, she got really violent and ended up kicking me in the face, trying to get out of the cab because she wasn't done. She pushed me and told me to fuck off, but ultimately sat back down in the cab crying. We had already exchanged numbers, so the next day she texted me apologizing profusely and asking if we could stay friends. I told her I appreciated her apology, but no thanks. Yikes. Big yikes. I will always try and help someone where I can, but that turned me off from going above and beyond. Plus, you can rarely rationalize with really drunk people and upset people. Damn. What a story. I, I honestly relate to them both, and I feel for them both. But I get why the woman who wrote this post rejected her friendship. A man named Dr. Spock wrote a handbook for child rearing. It was widely circulated and well received. Many of our parents likely got their child rearing advice from this book. In it, he recognized that babies throw up a lot and therefore recommended newborns be laid on their stomachs to sleep. Unknowingly, this would result in accidental smothering deaths of thousands of newborns. No. A huge number of SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, cases can be laid at his feet. What? To this day, the Back to Sleep campaign is still fighting to update parents on what we know now. Newborns should sleep on their backs until they can reliably roll over for themselves. Wow. Whoa, like I'm actually kind of sad now. Well, I think that's where I'll leave it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give the like button and the notification bell a little kiss. And subscribe to become a starlet. And don't forget to follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. I'll see you guys later. Bye!